Hello everyone. In this video, step 5, step B, we will discuss how can we config the PID controller PID Compact in Siemens TIA portal. In the previous video, step 5, step A, we discussed the essential input and output of all the settings around this PID controller function block. And then you will find where we can set the gain, integral, and the derivative parameters of this controller. The answer is all those key parameters are inside this function block. When we use this PID compact function block, there are some important configuration inside this function block. Through click this configuration button, so we can go inside of this controller. Also, we need to figure out where we can find out the gain, integral, and the derivative values so that we can use the HMI to set all those values. All right, let's start from the TIA portal and let's click this uh, configuration button of this uh, function block. Okay, we switch here. So let's go through those pages. Based on your case, you can select one typical control type here. Those control types are just a name. It doesn't have any relationship with a control algorithm or control method. So it only shows a different unit in the trend. Basically give you an idea what the basic role of this PID. For example, if this PID loop is used to control the speed, so we can select the speed control. Also from here, you can select this unit. And then this invert control logic is very important. Let's take uh, two systems as an example. If you are controlling one heater system, if you increase the, the heater energy or heater control, you find the temperature is going higher, then you do not need to select this uh, checkbox. But if you are controlling one cooling system, that means if you increase the output and you find your temperature is going down. In this case, you need to use and check this uh, invert logic this checkbox. The next selection that is very important, usually we can leave as a default. By default, it said if the CPU got a restart, with the control mode, we need to switch. By default, it will switch to the manual mode. That's most of the case we want, because after the CPU restart, we want to keep in a safe mode, that is a manual mode. And let's go to the next. Here, input output parameters. Here, we will select which kind of input to be used for this PID. So as our case, I will select this input. For the output, we will select this output. That means for the analog input scale and for the analog output and scale, we will program outside the PID, outside this function block. So the process value selection setting here, that allows us to set the limitation here. You can set the higher threshold and the lower threshold. And when the system outside this range, uh, we will get the output alarm bit from this PID loop. And uh, for the process limitations, uh, usually we will set the individual logic. And uh, most of the case, we will set uh, additional logic outside the PID loop. Also, if you are going to use uh, internal scaling for the analog input, you can enable the input underscore PR but in our case, currently we are using the program from outside to scale the analog input. So basically, we will not use any setting here. We will leave all of them as a default. Let's go to the advanced setting. Process value monitoring. So we can set the threshold here. When the system outside its range, it gives us uh, the alarm from this uh, PID function block. The output limits. Often, we will set a 0 to 100% here. But in some special case, for example, I got a one case, uh, that time I'm using the PID control one heater coil. But if I put a 100% fully energy to that coil, the coil will burn. So basically, I have to limit that output less than 70%. So I can set that limits here. So that depends on your case. And this setting is very important, reaction to error. That means when the PID control loop got something wrong, what the behavior for our output value. So 
usually we will set a value that value is safe for your system for example if your valve totally closed that will be safe for your system you can set a zero but some special case maybe the valve go to the 100% opened that is a safe for your process so in that case you can change to 100 here okay that totally depends on your case so but the most of the case maybe the valve closed is a safe for your process so by default that is a zero okay all right after those uh, appetizer let's shift to our main meal they are gain integral and the derivative and the coefficients so we can also click this button switch to this uh, PID parameters individually here to change the PID parameters we can click this uh, button and this allows us to manually set the uh, one initial parameters for this uh, PID loop for example we can set the uh, gain to 0 0.5 and the uh, integral action time we can set a uh, 10 here you can select the PI control or PID control right and uh, keep in mind this this is a very important parameter for the PID sampling time of the PID algorithm usually we will set this value equal to the cyclic interruption that interruption call the PID compact function block so in this case our PID loop is under this uh, 100 milliseconds cyclic interrupt so we will set 0 0.1 also we can see this help here so leave your mouse here click this so that means that the PID algorithm is only calculated upon every x cause of the instruction the so sampling time PID algorithm is a multiple of the cycle time of the calling OBs so that means our PID is coded by this uh, cyclic interrupt that is a uh, 100 milliseconds the minimum time we can set that is a uh, 0 0.1 also we can set a 0.5 that means every five times calls this PID will run one time also we can set a one seconds that means uh, every 10 times this uh, interrupt calls this uh, PID this PID will run one time and here you will find there are still three key parameters they are waiting parameters derivative delay coefficient a proportional action weighting and a derivative action weighting because some friends ask me what are useful for those three parameters so I would like to use this chance to explain what the role of those three parameters if we go back to this function block hit the F1 go to the help of this function block PID compact and firstly very key information that is this equation the traditional PID algorithm the B and the C that is a 1 and the A actually that is a 0 the reason why the Siemens PID algorithm they have a A B C these three parameters uh, they are very useful for the side point and the derivative factor from here you will see the A and the B and the C were the detail name of these uh, three key parameters and to find out the detail function of this uh, ABC you can search the name for example we can search the proportion action weighting and hit the search and select this uh, PID parameters V2 and from here you will find the detailed description and the explanation for this the main idea of this uh, a proportional action weighting that's because sometimes if we set a new set point the set point in a short time it become too much so the set point minus the feedback so the error will be a big value so ideally we want the set point gradually input into the PID you can imagine that set point could be a first order system to ramp up so this coefficient this weighting parameter can be set used for that often we can set this parameter for example 0.1 or 0.2 on this uh, proportion action weighting and for this uh, derivative action weighting is a similar idea uh, you can read the detailed description here so if it's equal to zero the derivative action is not in fact upon the set point change most of the time we will prefer to set a zero or 0 0.1 
on this uh, derivative action waiting. So in a short time, that sub point changed too much. So the output will give a very high value on the output. To prevent this happens, uh, we will prefer to set zero. So this is a derivative action is not effective on the side point change. Because in most of the control system, we want this uh, PID controller works against the uh, disturbance. We don't want this uh, derivative effective for the set point. So we will prefer set a zero or a very small value, for example, 0 0.1. Another thing is this derivative delay coefficient. You can see this by default, that is a zero. That is a, this a. So the standard PID algorithm, actually this area, that is a zero. So by default, a is zero. So when a is zero, that means derivative action is effective just for one cycle only and therefore almost not effective. But if we set this value greater than one, the greater the coefficient, the longer the effective of a derivative action is deleted. And this 0 0.5, this value has been proved very useful in practice for the controlled system with one domain time constant. So most of the system, personally, I will select this uh, derivative delay coefficient to 0 0.5 or use a system automatic fine tuning to automatically learn what the parameters will be useful for this system on this uh, derivative delay coefficient. This uh, 0 0.5 could be used as a default value. To check out this uh, description, you can search the proportional action weighting or the derivative action weighting. You can search the detailed description here. Okay. So those are the initial settings for this PID loop. All right, to check out the detailed parameters of this PID controller, we can also go to the parameter wheel. All those parameters are here. There is another way to check out those parameters. So if we close this parameter wheel, the instant DB of this PID control loop, that is 1131. So from here, we can right click and we can select this open db editor this allows us to use a traditional way to look at all the detailed parameters especially for the pid parameters so the pid parameters are showing here this is the actual pid parameters gain ti and the td parameters if we want to use the program directly write the pid parameters you can drag this uh, three tags into the program and write the value direct to this uh, gain ti and the td. Okay, till here we basically finished all the settings here. There's another important topic that is a manual and auto switch over bump list topic. But I will not program in here because if I program and introduce here, it's so boring. What I want to do is set up this control loop and let's go to the commissioning. And when we do the commissioning, I will show this switch over problem. And when you see the actual behavior, you will have a rough idea how that manual and auto switch over bump list works. I will temporarily park that topic here. And when we do the commissioning, I will program that portion. Okay, so till here, we've basically finished all the configuration for this PID. You will see there are two buttons here. This button is used to go to the configuration mode we just introduced. And there's a second button that is used to do the online commissioning. So if we click this button, that will switch to the online monitor, this train mode, which allows us to online monitor the side point feedback and the control signal. This is very useful to fine tune the PID parameters, especially to switch this PID loop into the pre-tuning and the fine tuning, automatic tuning mode. This is very useful using this panel. All right, till this step, we introduced how we can program the PID compact. So this video will purely show how we can program this PID compact. In next videos, I will show once we connect this PID loop to our controlled object, 
that controlled the object could be the actual process or could be a simulated process. So that is our controlled object. And once this a whole loop control system build up, once we go online, and we will see how this PID algorithm works and how this PID controller control the process. All right, that is for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.